Today I thought we'd take a look at the bridge on the Oasis of the Seas. Uh, sometimes I'm tempted to call it the bridge of the Starship Enterprise because uh, it's almost as sophisticated. Uh, this is truly the most sophisticated navigational bridge of any ship in the world. The vendor, the supplier of most of the navigation systems is Sperry Northrop Grumman. They supply almost all the navigation systems to the United States Navy warships. And the technicians that are on board here will tell you that the level of sophistication on the Oasis of the Seas is far greater than the level of sophistication on these Navy warships. So now what I'd like to do is walk you through, kind of system by system, so you really would get a good sense of all the uh, technologies that we have available here on the navigation bridge of the Oasis of the Seas. The first system we come to is our machine automation system. This is where we have all of the technical aspects of the ship available on one monitor. Literally any technical aspect of the ship comes up here uh, in mimics that allow us to see precisely what's going on real time at any given moment. This monitor, it's our electronic navigation system. It has electronic charts which provide very accurate representations of where the ship is using GPS uh, technology. A wealth of information in terms of wind speed, the ship speed, the speed we're making through the water, the speed we're making over the ground, the heading that we're actually steering, the heading that we're actually sailing, uh, because those can be different. Uh, it puts in traffic that might be around us. So again, on one display, you have pretty much all the information that you really need to understand uh, what's going on around the ship. Our navigators are, um, are sitting in a, a sitting position. Again, we want them just like an, an airline pilot uh, sitting there and, and monitoring the information. Overhead monitors, again, providing additional information. In this case, uh, course, heading, the rate of turn, how fast the ship is turning. Uh, it shows us our azipod indicators. If we were using bow thrusters, we have that indication. And then we can also put on closed circuit television images. If there's some part of the ship we'd like to be uh, monitoring, uh, that's also available um, on these forward overhead displays. Here in the center, uh, this is my monitoring station. This is where I can uh, position myself and have, again, the same uh, information available that the navigation officers have, the officers of the watch, as we call them. Uh, I have my radar, I have my electronic charting system. I have a very comfortable uh, chair right on the center line of the ship, so I'm looking dead ahead. If you're looking here, something that might be missing uh, is where is the ship's helm? Where is the ship's wheel? The world's largest cruise ship, well then it should have the world's largest wheel or helm. Uh, and it's not here at all, is it? Well, in fact, it's all the way in front. Uh, we move the helmsman, which gives him a great view of where he's steering. He has the instrumentation that he needs to, uh, to steer accurately. Between the two conning positions, we have the, uh, the center console controls. This is where we have our dynamic positioning controls, DP. We're actually using a very advanced computerized maneuvering system that brings all of the various uh, controls for azipods, bow thrusters, into one lever or one joystick, uh, allowing for precision maneuvering with an accuracy of decimeters, which is actually just, just inches, uh, which again is amazing when you think of the overall size of the Oasis of the Seas. Well, I hope you'll agree with me that the, the bridge and the level of sophistication on the Oasis of the Seas is, uh, is quite remarkable. But this is just a small, small part of the ship. Uh, this is an amazing creation, and it's all started in Turku, Finland. So we thought you'd like to get a little bit of a sense of what, uh, what happens at the shipyard and the, the obviously uh, vital role uh, that the shipyard uh, STX in Turku, Finland played in creating this amazing ship. This is the capital of shipbuilding in Finland. It has meant, I mean, everything. The shipbuilding has been traditionally, I think, more than 200 years, a, a big part of the economy around here. The city of Turku is located around the outer river. Shipbuilding has existed there. I think 250, close to 300 years. When I was a kid, I spent all my summer holidays from June 1st until the last day of August. My parents took us to their summer place, which is on the islands uh, in the archipelago just outside Turku. Mostly spending the time on water and very much sailing. So that's why I applied for the Technical University of Helsinki in 1970. And that was the time when, when Song of Norway was uh, at the outfitting pier outside the yard in Helsinki, and I, I thought that what a beauty. That was something remarkable. And um, it passed my mind at that time that it might be one day interesting to be involved in, in shipbuilding. 
Royal Caribbean was the first one really said, let's make a tailor-made cruise ship. And then it just happened so that our company and Royal Caribbean came together and the thinking, it, 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 it worked well from the very beginning. To develop this type of product, which is so challenging, so demanding, so many new features, it has really made a tremendous step for shipbuilding in Finland. In our company, we are 4,000 own employees. But the whole infrastructure, the maritime cluster in Finland, employs about 20,000. I think everybody deep inside feels really proud about coming, making this come true here in, in Turku in Finland.